Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight we're going to look at Cucumber, business-driven development, how to integrate that with Spring Boot, how to start up the Spring Boot context, and then test it with some Cucumber scripting. If you don't know what Cucumber is, then go to cucumber.io. If you don't know what business-driven development is, then I will quickly explain it to you right here. It is that you um, that you actually have these, uh, you have this way of formulating your tests. So you have a, um, yeah, you have a feature that you want to test like this. Uh, this is from cucumber.io. Uh, like we want to test, it's a, it's a Friday yet and then we have description everybody wants to know well, why 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 do we why do we need this everybody wants to know uh, when it's friday then then we have the scenario and it's actually inside the scenario that the programming and the test actually happens this is the name of the scenario sunday isn't friday so here given this is the context so here we put up the we bought us a context given today is sunday and then we uh, then we do something then when i ask whether it's friday yet then I should be told nope. So this is the this is how you would phrase a a, a good test in business driven development, and this means that the business people uh, or your product owner can actually help with phrasing these in your um, uh, whenever you whenever you get a, a, a scrum a task, then you can uh, then you can have that as an accept criteria that there is a test like this that shows whether it in this case is Friday. We we will do something a bit more uh, complex soon. Uh, what you need to know is that uh, you of course you need to write some code and behind behind the scenes behind this text right here then you have um, some java methods uh, because we are uh, playing around with java right now so the, then you have some java methods and then you annotate those in cucumber with add given and then you can annotate uh, some other methods with add when and then add then and then you can actually test for these things so you you reuse your existing knowledge to for instance JUnit if you want to use JUnit you can also use some of the other uh, assertion frameworks like like Hamcrest, um, so it means that you can actually you would use your your regular uh, assertion uh, techniques, and then you would you can also throw exceptions if you want to do that. That's also that's up to you. But uh, the, the 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 best thing is to assert stuff and to fail test just like if it was a JUnit test. So how do we wire this up, right? So let us go and look at this project. I'm happy that you asked because I have prepared uh, this project right here. It is uh, it will be located on. Um, it's located on um, on GitHub as usual. Um, so I'll commit and push the code as soon as this video is over right here. Um, so the first thing we need to do is that uh, I'll, I'll just tell you how I created this project as usual. I, I created this by pressing file, new. I'm using IntelliJ, a file, new projects, and then I chose Spring Initialize. I chose Maven. Yeah. And I choose, of course, if you want to use Gradle, there, there is a, there you have to add the uh, you have to add the same uh, dependencies, but you have to do it in a, in a uh, little bit uh, other way. Uh, but I, I might show you that in another video. But this in this video, it's Maven that we focus on. So Java Maven, and it's Java 18 that I use, and it has compatibility with Java 17. Then I press next right here. Then I got this uh, Spring initializer. Um, then I can choose from the shelf as usual. I chose Lombok, I chose Spring Web, I chose JPA, JPA, Spring Data JPA, and I also ticked off uh, H2, H2 like this. I also ticked off the H2 database right there. Then I press create, and then I ended up with this project right here. And then I went to my pump.xml file because this is where the magic happens. First of all, the first thing you want to do, you want to add a cucumber version in the top, uh, in, a, in the properties section of your pond.xml file, because that version will, uh, then you you have to use that version three uh, places, and you don't want to type it in all those three places, then you can have, then uh, you can have inconsistent uh, cucumber versions, and then you could also end up in trouble. Another thing, you do not want to use the latest and greatest, which is uh, 7.6 right now. Uh, it will not work with... Um, uh, with with the uh, with the current version of Spring, uh, at least not this version I'm using right here, uh, 2.7.3. As soon as I downgraded to 7.5 instead, then everything just worked as uh, as expected. So so use 7.5 and yeah. Let us just look at what you have to add because all, all of this is cause, of course uh, regarding testing. And uh, the whole purpose is that we want to have access, we want to use these cucumber files that has the last name that feature. 
uh, and to, to enable those and, to, and also to uh, enable the unit uh, testing with uh, Cucumber, then we have to add this dependency right here. This will actually link up the Cucumber and the JUnit part. And uh, this will actually, uh, this will then uh, link up the Cucumber and the Java part, so then we can write some, uh, some Java code. And then the last part right here, this is uh, this is the magic. If you want to, if you have a Spring application and you want to, um, you if you want to spin up uh, an application context which you want, if you want to test your Spring application, right? So then you need this dependency right here, Cucumber Spring. Add all of, all of those three uh, dependencies, boom, 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 and then you are good to go. Then you have to, uh, you're not totally good to go yet because you have to do some wiring as usual. And uh, first of all, we have to do, to, to do some um, uh, general Cucumber wiring. And that uh, I've done this in a, a Cucumber integration test file. You can, uh, of course, you can create your own class and you can name it whatever you want to. And in this uh, in this test file right here, you have to say that you want to run, uh, you want to run this with Cucumber. And then you have to set some Cucumber options right here. And here, uh, and it, this gets a little bit tricky. Uh, first of all, you have to say where are the tests, the features that is actually just the test mm -hmm. specification, the business-driven development uh, specifications of what you what you want to test. So this is actually your test mm -hmm. uh, folder. And I like to uh, use the class path right here, right class path, and then features because then I have all of my uh, Cucumber test inside the resources for features folder right there. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also use a path. I um, I usually have some problems when I try to use the path because then sometimes it's trying to go from the root of the, uh, uh, of the system or something like that. Use class path. It's much better. Use class path and then which folder uh, and, and your, the folder that you've placed your Cucumber test in. And I would, don't place them in the root. Place, choose some folder because then you have them all. Um, then you have them all bund bundled together there. Glue. This is very important. This glue for, uh, right here. And here you actually choose one or more um, one or more packages and I've chosen the package cucumber glue and this is where you place the spring boot part of the of the cucumber and again you can see we are down in the, in the test sources right here this is the test source uh, and if you go look in the cucumber glue fold uh, package right here then I have something called the spring integration test so this is also a file that you need and this this uh, file actually right here it actually spins up the context so it spins up your spring boot context and you have to add spring boot context like just like this i like to use a random port that is because if i have a backend running already then i don't have to stop the backend and then start my test afterwards um, i would definitely also recommend you to use random port when you are testing uh, and you can do that by adding web environment and then choose random port like this we can we of course we need the port because we want to test from all the way outside of our application and then we want to reach the rest controllers that's there's a scenario where that we want to, um, to to explore in just a minute so this means that we actually need this port so we need to know what which port it is but it's very easy to get that uh, port spoiler alert at local server port but uh, i'll show you in just two minutes uh, you also need to add cucumber context configuration when you have a class like this then you're actually kind of happy. Then you can create some steps, and um, the steps that's actually where all the magic happens. This is where you are. You can see here when when you have this uh, text right here, like when the client calls endpoint, and then a var variable right here of the type string. This format right here, this is called the cucumber um, syntax. There's also you can also use regular expression, but this is like uh, yeah, you can use both of the, those. And the documentation on cucumber's website is quite good for the cucumber. Uh, Syntax for the Cucumber line syntax, they have a link to a GitHub repository where you can see how to actually uh, format these. I think this is the most simple format. If you want to use regular expression, then you get that uh, weird hat to begin with, and you get a dollar to end with. And it is also okay, of course, if you want to do something more um, something more complex, then uh, then use the regular expression. If you want to do something simple, like, like I have right now, I have the client calls an endpoint, which is a string, and then I have a variable right here, which maps to that, which this is my string. As you can see right here, here we have the add local server port. So this actually steals the local server port from the yeah from from the from the Spring context uh, values. You can also, if you want to, you can also use add value and then find the uh, yeah I think it's a servlet servlet uh, dot port and then uh, you can also do it like that. But at uh, at local server port, that's uh, it, it's meant for that this use case. So just choose that. 
Um, and as you can see, we do not extend anything. We do not. Uh, we don't don't have any annotations on these steps right here. We just we need, just need to place them inside the cucumber glue uh, package. That's that's important to to be able to use them. And then this is also important. We need to define a last response variable because then first we can call something uh, like with when, and then afterwards then we can test if the status code is something that uh, yeah that, that we expected here. Here we have an integer, and then we have mapped that to an integer right here, and then we assert that status code is expected, and then um, then the assertion is that the status code value on the, of the last response, and this is all a, 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 if you know your Spring, uh, then you know that the, when you are using the REST template, you can actually choose to get a response entity back when you use the dot exchange method on um, on the rest template right there um yeah so here we can, here we actually build up the ul also let me just show that actually so here we have the new template new rest template right here exchange and you use the reason why i choose exchange because then i get the whole response entity back and then i can actually ask for then i can check for the, the status code the header the body i can and i can just i can check for the whole response part um, here we have the first part that is the local host and colon and then we have the port which was which will be mapped in right here and then we have the URL. This is actually the yeah. This is the endpoint uh, that we get from the yeah from 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 the test. So the, this means this comes from the string that we write uh, write in just a minute. And then we have the method that is HTTP GET. Uh, we don't need to add any request entity. The, and then we expect to get a string as return type. That's quite cool. That's quite cool. And then we can uh, so first we call this, then we call then, and then we call then again if you want to do that. Uh, and of course we can create as many uh, when then uh, and also given. Given would be like if you want to set up the context. So if you want to refresh some data, set up so set up the scene that that then you would use the at given um, annotation to begin with. But first, just focus on getting up and started with your. Uh, a cucumber um, and i'll just show you that i have the spaceship launch controller right here and what it does is it's actually uh, you can see here it's a rest controller and it matches this slash launch uh, counter and then uh, last count so that means that it actually takes the last count as a, a variable and then it subtracts one and then uh, it actually says t minus and then the next count and or else if it's uh, if, if we reach zero, then it will, then it will say launch, go, 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 go instead. So it's, it's quite a simple uh, launch uh, controller that I have right here. It is definitely one that NASA could use. Uh, let's not talk about that. About the, uh, yeah, I will try to focus right now. So I'll go to my features file. So here I have my features file right here. So I have this uh, feature. Countdown to launch um, uh, should, should work. Uh, you can write whatever you want right here. That's just the name of your feature. Then you have a, a, one, a, a, a some scenarios here. And of course, you can have multiple scenarios. Call back end with last countdown number. Okay, then we can, uh, and then we have when. And you can actually see that IntelliJ knows this syntax right here. IntelliJ, of course, is an awesome uh, integrated development environment. Uh, and uh, if you all use other uh, IDEs like um, VS Code, that's also awesome, of course. Um, then uh, that, that, there's also support for Cucumber there. So that's actually that, that, is, that is a cool thing about Cucumber. There's support for it in almost uh, yeah, in, in a lot of the um, IDEs, at least. So here we have the when, and that is blue, as you can see right here. And then we have the text right here. If I don't remember the text that I wrote in, the, in my step definitions, then I can write control space. And then I actually can see here when the client calls endpoint string. And you might remember where that came from. That comes from uh, Cucumber My Steps. Uh, steps. I'll just go back right here. The client calls endpoint and then the string. So we'll go to back to this. So the client calls endpoint right here a slash four and then we get this then the response status code is 200 so that means the first we actually call this and then we save the response and then um, then response status code should be 200 and then we assert that and this assertion right here that is handcrest and you can mix these assertion types and uh, let's go up to see the top which look right here we have a matcher assert from handcrest so we have a j unit mixed with handcrest and there's no problem in that at all um, and then in the last assertions right here, return string should be. Then we have an, a normal assertion. This is JUnit 5. As you can see right here, assertions uh, assert equals. And then we have expect the value. And then we have the get body of the response right here. So it's quite awesome. And it's um, the cool thing about this. Um, 
The cool thing about this is that you can actually, you have this text right here, so uh, it is a way to actually communicate with the business and with the with the product owner uh, when when you make these, um, yeah, and also to, to ensure that um, yeah, to ensure that you have the right accept criteria if you are running Scrum, for instance, or uh, Kanban, then it's it's nice to have the right exception criteria, and the business can actually write these uh, criteria. Of course, you have to code whatever they write here, whatever the business write here. Then of course you have to code what's uh, underneath it. You can also create technical test this is i would say this is a technical integration test because we actually call from from outside in and then we actually want to expect this to work okay i've talked enough now let us press the run button you probably want to see it work so run cucumber demo and what does it say here here it says uh, yes green and green so with the client calls the car that, that was okay we could do that and then we expect this is uh, we expected something uh, that we got 200 back and then um, we returned the returned answer should be t minus three that's um, exactly as we expect let us create another criteria another scenario because the good thing about these cucumber tests is that you're also more likely to actually reuse the cucumber tests when you're writing genuine tests a lot of times at least then you speak, then you end up with writing something totally unique um yeah also if you, if you write your spring boot tests which is a kind of um they're almost integration tests uh, it's almost the same of course it is, it is the same as these cucumber tests because we can call from the outside in but we can also just go directly into the spring boot context then we can write some good to text there to test there but we are, you're not that um you're not that likely to actually reuse some tests that it's already has already been made and that is a cool thing about the uh, cucumber you have these reusable steps uh, of course, you could have you could code exactly the same with Java code, but you're just not. It, it, it just doesn't feel as natural as um, as actually reusing these uh, these strings right here. So now we have a scenario. Uh, call backend with one with one. So let us try that. And because what happens there? We, again, we would like to have two hundred left back. This time, let us just leave. We will set C minus zero. We know this is wrong because we saw that the output is something like uh, launch go go go. So let us just check what actually happens right here. We have the, the the test is running, and here we get a fail, and we can see it's yellow as, uh, as we would expect because it's failed. If it would be red, then it would be because an exception has been thrown. A one time exception happened um, that there was an error in the program. You can see right here the text is launched, go go go. So now I am. Yeah, I'm cheating. I'm stealing the text right now, and then I say that I expect that the text should be launch, go, 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 go. Now press play again. And then we see what happens. And now it's green. So that's quite good. Let us create another test. Sometimes it's good to create negative tests uh, when you have these, these all positive text, uh, test. Call pop it back in with rubbish. So now we actually call with rubbish non exist thing in point so now we will just send put some input that does not work uh, like um, uh, my counter or something like that so i've, I've and actually we can actually see that the uh, intel is so smart that it actually shows right here okay it shows as a typo so i have, i hope i was actually hoping that it was uh, it would bind it to the controller but it did not launch uh, yes 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 and then we have my counter and then one so we know that this does not exist so we expect to get a response code 44 and that is actually it so now let us try to run this test right here this is a negative test we expect that yeah what what does it say right here call 44 okay we actually got an error already there error not found that is okay that is because the rest yeah that is because the rest template it actually throws an ex an, ex an exception, which is the HTTP client error exception. Of course, we could catch we could catch that. Of course, of course, we could catch that. Try try this stuff right here, and then catch HTTP exception. Yes. And they would just lock the file. We just lock there. So we just say, just say, yeah, let us just print it out. So now we're just printing out the, 
I think we have a HTTP exception dot print stack trace like this. So now we're just printing it out in our tests. If we get an error, and then we can assert that we can use it. The only reason I'm doing this is because I want to use the uh, the status code assertion. So let us see what happens right here. Ah, okay, we do not get it. We, we don't get it because now the last response is, is um, actually null. So let us just keep, we will keep the exception. That's actually better. That's okay. So, um, so this is actually okay. I'll just delete this test again. Of course, we could uh, it, it could it could be fixed. Of course, um, response code is four four. Okay, now actually, okay, I just uh, changed my mind again. Sorry. Uh, let us just catch the exception again. Because when when we check this, then we can ass assertions that assert not now, and then we can say response last response like this. And duplicate this last response that get status code. This should also be not be null. Uh, uh. So we actually expect that these are not null. So and, and this is actually fine. Let us see what happens now instead. Mm. I think we get a better test. Response code is 404. Um, yeah, then we can still not use this. Um, we can also say that the response code is not there, something like that. Response code is not present. So now I'm creating a new string right here. That means now I need to go to my uh, endpoints right here. So I'll copy. I'll copy this part right here. Control D for duplicates. Then the stage code is not is not present and we do not expect anything response status code is not present and then we assert null we actually assert that the last response is null that's actually what we expect so let us go back to our file right here it's not present so let us try to see what happens now so <clears throat> So now it works. So and then let us, we can run all of our tests by pressing in the top. We can also use Maven. Let us just see what happens if we run test, and let's see what happens if we run verify, because we have different phases, as you probably know. In let us just press. Uh, let us just run test. Maven test right there. Let's see what happens. Mm. Of course, you can still when you're using Cucumber. Of course, you can still have your unit tests. So you can still have your regular unit test as, as usual, and it actually there was it was okay test run, but which test did it run? Application test, Spring Boot Cucumber application test. So it ran that one. I'm pretty sure it did not run this Cucumber test right here because yeah, you see it is still happy. So I want to I want, I want to leave an error right here because then now we are now let us start now now let us start Maven verify. Let us see what happens now because then we come into the phase with integration test. That is why. So let us see what actually happens now. It still said okay. It did not run my cucumber tests. Why did it not do that? What did I do wrong? Cucumber, Maven, Spring Boot, run. Here we have building. Yeah, that was actually a good. Uh, that was a good one there with building. Boom, boom, boom. How did we? How did I do that? I was actually be sure that if I ran a random Maven. Ah, uh, let us try to ver verify. Verify. That's, that should be verified. That should be enough. So, I'll figure this one out, and then I'll um, I'll make another video on cucumber testing. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great evening. Hope to see you again soon. Bye bye.